everybody, welcome back to Best Life and Beyond, back at Disneyland, and this is a first timer's guide to Disneyland. Whether this is your first time, your first time back since the pandemic, or your 1,000th time here, this guide is to kind of share some tips and tricks that you maybe don't know, maybe some things that may be helpful to enhance your trip. Help we're you gonna, navigate it. Yeah, we're gonna kind of help guide you to having one of your best days. We're obviously gonna make more of these videos, but this is the first one of the series, so uh, stick with us. Make sure to subscribe because we got a lot to share with you today. All right, first thing we can tell you is one of the most important tips is to get here early. If you only have one day, and if it's your first visit, I think getting here early is the best way to do it because why, Katie? They'll let you start parking about an hour, sometimes to an hour and a half, before the park even opens. Yeah. And let me just tell you, it gets crazy crowded around 10 to 12 o'clock. Those are the hours that you really don't wanna be coming into the park. Your best bet is to get here at Rope Drop really early, right when the park opens. They'll let you in shortly before uh, it opens, usually 8 or 9 a.m. And you can just go to your rides that you want to get on. You can actually knock out a ton, even without buying Genie Plus. We have plenty of videos on that that we'll make sure we link yeah. in the description box below so you can see how many rides we did without Genie Plus yeah. just by coming super early. And something else that you have to do on your first visit to Disneyland, this is a must, you have to get your first visit button. They're free, they're complimentary. Usually you can get them over at City Hall when you first walk in the left tunnel. They usually leave a bin out there for self-serve for all the different buttons, you know, graduation, first visit, birthday, those types of things. There's a Sharpie out there, you can write your name. If the bin's not there, you can go inside and let them take care of it for you and they'll write your name on there in a cool font. And if you don't want to wait in line at City Hall, you can go to almost all retail locations throughout the resort and they will have most of the buttons for you and they'll even provide you a Sharpie so you can write your name or whatever else you're celebrating. isn't your thing and you really want to go shopping the morning is the best time to go shopping if you wait till the end of the day the stores are packed and if you want to meet characters they're all in town square there's mickey right there minnie is right behind me right there you just got to wait in line uh, when they come out and sometimes they'll let you know if you're not going to get a chance to meet them because they do like 15 20 minute increments uh, before they go on a break so make sure you pick your character wisely uh, goofy is over there in uh, in the middle of town square right now so they all have their own little spots uh, but it's pretty cool uh, you can meet a character right off the bat right in the beginning of the day and they do this they come out most of the day but make sure to get it in the day because they don't do it at night Something else you gotta do when you come to Disneyland is ride a Main Street vehicle. There's there's a bunch of them. There's a horse-drawn carriage, there's a car, there's a fire truck. That's Walt's favorite vehicle. And there's an omnibus. It's one of the funnest things to do here at Disneyland. Okay, now something really important that we're gonna talk about is mobile ordering. It is something that was implemented uh, a couple years ago. It slowly made its way uh, into the mainstream of Disneyland. And it helps out a lot because when it's crowded, and it's crowded a lot, it's uh, something that you need to utilize now. Uh, you have to plan ahead because a lot of times the wait is, you know, it could be an hour. Yeah, it really can. Yeah. Uh, especially for those popular items like Dole Whips, uh, beignets sometimes can be done by the end of the day. Now that doesn't mean that you can't do a standby line. Uh, most of the time they are available, but you know, for Galactic Grill is a great example. Sometimes Galactic Grill, the mobile, there's literally one line for standby, yeah. and then the rest is on mobile order. So your best bet, we always recommend mobile order. So before you come to the park, download the free Disneyland app. Uh, that way you can see wait times, all that stuff, but yeah. most importantly, you can do that mobile order. So when you're on your home screen on the Disneyland app, you're gonna hit the little plus sign and you're gonna hit order food. Now, depending on where you're at, it's gonna pull up your nearest locations, but if you're farther away from another park, you can still order. You can also order in DCA if you're in Disneyland. Um, we're gonna do the milk stand because we're really close and uh, it'll give you an option for a time. Right now it says 11.20. That's our soonest time. So it'll confirm your arrival. We're gonna just order a blue milk. 
and check out. So when it's time for your order to be ready, you'll see it pop up where it says, I'm here, please prepare my order. Just make sure you're standing really close because if you have them prepare your order and you're not there, they will charge your card. Now, another thing you can do is if you see that you're kind of running late and you know you want to fix something, you can hit change arrival window and you can select a new time and then that will be your little uh, time window. Once you're at your location and you know it's your window, you go to mobile food orders and then we'll hit I'm here, prepare my order. And as soon as it's ready, the phone will notify you. Now again, make sure you only do that when you're actually close enough to be able to get the order or they will charge you. Thank you. Now while we're here at Galaxy's Edge, it's probably worth mentioning the Genie Plus. I think if you're here for a day and it's a little bit crowded, I think it's something that's worth investing in. If you don't want to wait in lines, like right now, Smuggler's Run is at a 45 minute standby. That's not too bad in the scheme of things, but you can make it a lot less if you purchase the Genie Plus. It's 20 bucks a day per person, and you get any ride that has the Fast Pass, AKA the Genie Plus system, the Lightning Lanes is, is what they call them. Any ride that has that, you get to do it one time with the Genie Plus. There's also the option to just buy into a couple of the premium rides like Rise of the Resistance. Now, that's something that goes pretty early in the morning. You have to kind of book that and purchase that right when you get in the park because it books up pretty fast. Otherwise, I suggest just getting that at Rope Drop and waiting the maybe 20 minutes at the most at Rope Drop uh, to get on that attraction. But as far as Genie Plus is concerned, it's a great way to get a lot of attractions done in both parks. The $20 covers both parks. It's something worth thinking about because it has been crowded seven days a week here at Disneyland lately. All right, over here at Oga's Cantina, this is one of the most popular things to do as of late because it's kind of new. Oga's Cantina, a lot of times it's hard to get into, hard to get a reservation on the app, but... What you can do, you can come and do a walk-up. Uh, whenever you're walking by, as long as you're clo in close proximity to Oga's, you can check on the Disneyland app and it'll tell you if walk-up lists are available. Um, but if it says there's no more walk-ups available, just give it five or 10 minutes because usually they open up really quickly and it'll give you about a 30, maybe a 40 minute wait. So you can go do some other things and then come back and get into Oga's. If you're looking for a quick breakfast, one of our favorite options is to come over to Tomorrowland at the Galactic Grill and you can do a mobile order and we love to split a breakfast burrito. Super good and we also get some coffee too. It's just the perfect thing to have when you want to grab something to eat and then hit some attractions. They also offer a breakfast sandwich if you don't want the burrito. So you got a few options when you come to Galactic Grill. All right, we jumped on the monorail because this next tip is kind of crucial if you want to ride the monorail and it's summertime and it's very hot. Make sure that you ride it in the morning because this monorail shuts down at high temperatures. If it gets high 80s, 90s, yeah, monorail. See, the monorail knows. We have no air conditioning in our monorails here yeah. in New Zealand, so evening or morning is your best bet. And while I'm on an attraction, I wanted to mention to you guys a little hack that I have done for years here. It doesn't always offer itself up, but when it does, it's a good one. Now, if it's crowded and you can't get on an attraction without a 60 or 90 minute wait and you don't have Genie Plus, if a ride breaks down and you're in the vicinity when it turns back on, you're in good shape because it's almost like being there for rope drop and you can walk pretty much right onto the attraction with, you know, maybe with a 10 minute or even less of a wait. our best advice is to avoid it mid-afternoon at all costs. As you can see, it is crazy busy here mid-afternoon because a lot of the little kids, it's kind of their prime time. Our best advice is to come and spend that first hour getting a lot of these attractions done in Fantasyland or stay late at night when all the little ones go to bed. All right, we're over here at Splash Mountain. We have a good tip about Splash Mountain because inherently they just went down the, uh, the flume, the big flume. It's a get wet kind of attraction if you weren't aware. It sure is. And the heavier your uh, log or boat, the more you're going to get soaked. Yeah, and certain uh, seats get more wet. But Yes, but... the back seats tend to get a little bit less wet. The front couple, 
you probably are going deep sea diving. Now our tip is if you know you're gonna go on some water rides here at Disneyland, bring a pair of flip-flops in your backpack because at least your clothes will kind of dry off. But let me tell you, when your feet are soggy, really hard for your shoes to dry off. Yeah, we've had a lot of people follow that tip and we're very grateful for it. And it feels kind of nice anyways if it's a hot day to have flip-flops on. It does, just for a little while, yeah. you know, you uh, really I, get to enjoy it. I also recommend bringing a plastic bag or something if you have a backpack to put that in. The floor of the log tends to get kind of wet if you do have a backpack. So uh, if you have a Disneyland merch bag that you purchased something, maybe use that. But flip-flops and a plastic bag will save your day when you're riding Splash Mountain. People don't know you can actually bring food and drink inside Disneyland Park. Um, so what we recommend doing is bringing a lunch. And why do we recommend lunch? Because it is the busiest time and hardest time to get food here at Disneyland. So if you bring lunch, you can have a picnic anywhere in the park and it is awesome to do. And one of our favorite picnic options is to take the raft out to Tom Sawyer's Island. It's nice, it's kind of a getaway from the park. It's a little quieter. There's some shade, there's some nice little spots to have a picnic. And while you're on Tom Sawyer's Island, make sure you explore the caves. Not a lot of people know they're there and there's even some magic hidden in a few of them. Now, as a first timer, you cannot miss Pirates of the Caribbean and or the Haunted Mansion. Both attractions really define the Disneyland park. I feel like you cannot miss one or both of these attractions as they really represent the magic and the classic style of a Disneyland attraction. And a great tip for a couple of attractions here at Disneyland, single rider. This will help you get on something that's pretty crowded a lot faster than normal. Now there's three single rider attractions at Disneyland. We've got Matterhorn, we've got Splash Mountain, and we've got Smuggler's Run. There are a few more over at Disney California Adventure, but this video is focused more on Disneyland, so we'll just talk about those. Yeah, it's really nice. If you don't mind splitting up from your partner or your party, you can really save some precious time. Yeah. Uh, also, sometimes you can get kind of lucky. There's been times where we've utilized the single rider option on Matterhorn, and we've gone together, and uh, I think we also did it on Smuggler's Run. So yeah. uh, it can save you some time, and you could possibly still stay with your party. treat at Disneyland you have to have a classic Disneyland churro like the ones right behind me they are located all throughout the park though there's multiple locations but there is nothing like a classic Disneyland churro at times they put out specialty churros but just trust me get a classic one you cannot go wrong with that and there's a few other treats you missed Katie <laughs> don't forget about the Mickey beignets the Dole Whip and the Matterhorn macaroon. Oh, and Gibson Girl ice cream on Main Street. She's gonna keep anding. Those are, <laughs> that's it, those are the must-haves. And you don't need to bring more than one water bottle. There's actually refilling stations of filtered water throughout the park. One of them is here in Frontierland at Rancho Del Zocalo, over in Tomorrowland at Galactic Grill, and Red Rose Tavern in Fantasyland. And Galaxy's Edge. At the oh Dianoga. yeah, Galaxy's Edge is the new, right. the new Dianoga. See, that's how you know I'm classic Disneyland girl. She just forgets. Uh, but then also, if you forgot your water bottle, they offer free cups. I'll take one of those. All right, here you go, sir. Over on Main Street, uh, this is kind of one of the spots that people like to hang out and wait for the parade. Here and on the other side, a couple of really good spots all around the hub. But we suggest... Coming to the later show. Yeah, usually there's two of them. Mm -hmm. The later one yeah, is... If, if there's two parades, we definitely recommend hitting the last one because it tends to be just a little bit less crowded. Yeah, and during the first one, you should go and hit as many rides as you can because uh -huh. most of the park is waiting for the parade. And it's what I call the parade effect. And uh, you have you stand a good chance of getting on a bunch of rides while everybody is you know, waiting for the parade or watching the parade itself. And then you can catch the second one. And let's not forget about the best corn dogs in the business. Right here on Main Street, you've got Little Red Wagon. There's also a location called Stage Door Cafe that's over in Frontierland on the Rivers of America. But this place is the classic standby spot. Now the line can tend to be quite long like it is today. It's going way back around the corner. That'll take a while. We suggest Mobile order! Mobile order, yeah. <laughs> it makes 
makes it so much easier. I'm telling you, it'll cut the time in half. Yeah. And by the way, I know they do sell them at Stage Shore, but Little Red Wagon, it's it's so much this better. This is where you want to get your corn dog. It's the original. It's so much better. Just trust us and get your corn dog from here. And don't forget, mobile order. And then you can take it over on a little bench in, in the hub, or uh, you can walk with it. It's a good kind of grab and go type of item. But it's something I feel like you cannot miss when you come to Disneyland. Now, something else that is a must do on your first visit to Disneyland, if you have the time, take in some of the entertainment. It's free, it's scattered around the park. There's the Dapper Dan's on Main Street, can't miss them. There's even the cavalcade that comes out of Main Street with Mickey and friends, and it's just, you know, it's a fun little quick diversion. Something to do, get you in the mood, and uh, you can't miss it. And then you've got things like the bootstrappers over in New Orleans Square, sometimes. And last but not least, I have to mention the Disneyland band. They are awesome. A lot of times you can catch them in the morning, uh, playing right here at the train station. And they make some other appearances uh, throughout the day, uh, coming down Main Street at certain points. Uh, you can maybe ask around some cast members uh, if you know when the schedule is, but you cannot miss the Disneyland band. Your attention, please. Last call for the Disneyland Limited. And something else you can't miss on your first visit to Disneyland, I think personally, is a ride on the Disneyland Railroad. The Grand Circle Tour, it was very close to Walt Disney's heart. It was kind of his passion, trains and model trains and having a train at Disneyland was like the ultimate for Walt. And it's a really fun ride for the entire family. There's four stops total, including Main Street. So if you wanna stop off at New Orleans Square, you wanna stop off over at Toontown, Tomorrowland, or back at Main Street, you can use it for transpo or you can just take a leisurely ride around. Some people ride it multiple times to just stay on and, and just enjoy themselves. It's really one of the most classic attractions ever. So I highly recommend a grand circle tour on the Disneyland Railroad. And probably the best tip and advice I could give for a first timer coming to Disneyland is have a magical time. This is the happiest place on earth. Yeah, it's not always just about the rides. It's about the food. It's about the merchandise. It's about the shows, the magical feeling, and the things that you get to do here. So let's do something fun, and let's all put something in the comments below to help anybody who's coming for their first time. If you have any tips, tricks, suggestions, leave them in the comments below so we can help each other out to have the best, most magical first visit to Disneyland. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel your notification bell and we'll see you next time on best life and beyond bye bye everybody <laughs>